hundred dollars. She's the secretary at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we're back live. Go ahead. Okay. So now this this particular lesson is 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 a very interesting one because when you remember when Jesus healed the man at the pool at Bethesda, mm -hmm. he healed that man. Uh, the Jews got angry with Jesus because he healed that man on the Sabbath. Mind you now, I believe this man was there, what, 38 years? Mm -hmm. I think that's the same one. For 38 years, he could not be healed. For 38 years, he was there. So Jesus heals him. You would think that the Pharisees would rejoice with the man. Yes. Or the Jews would rejoice with him because he's finally healed. Mm -hmm. But they're angry with God or with Jesus because he heals them on the Sabbath day. Then Jesus says that he and his father, he, he, he speaks about that he comes from his father, God. The Bible said when he said that, I believe it was, that was John 5, ch uh, the 5th chapter, verse 16. When you get to John, the 5th chapter, and the 17th verse, now they want to kill him. Yeah. Because he said that he's the son of God. But when he healed that man, now they from that moment begin to follow him and pursue him yes, sir. to find a way to find him guilty to kill him. And I believe they sent the Pharisees. And that's why everywhere Jesus went, he was always having problems with them Pharisees and them Sadducees. Now, what's interesting now, the uh, Exodus 20 and 11, I think, is the fourth commandment. The fourth commandment is the, the remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. I asked the question, does Christians today, are we obligated to keep the Sabbath? And the answer is no. Mm. To prove a point, we don't have service on the Sabbath. We have it on Monday. So we're going against it anyway. So we're going against it anyway. Now, we can say all we want that uh, uh, that was for us. But you yourself don't go to church on Saturday. You go to church on Sunday. That's right. So it's, it's, it's just the thing of we just ain't really uh, looking at it and reading it and studying it. Another thing I want to bring out before we go further, he gave the Sabbath to the Jews. Mm -hmm. And he says, this is a law between me and you. And then he gave it to them as an everlasting covenant. And then he gave it between them and him as a sign. Right. And so each time God gave a law, he told Moses, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, not speak unto the whole world, speak unto them and say unto him. And that's why when they saw a man uh, walking, he had kindled, he had got some sticks. The Bible said that they, the children of Israel took him and they asked God what to do. God said, kill him. So he had to die. And another word we, we need to look at, which is in Exodus, I mean, Leviticus 23 and 10, the 10th verse, verse 7, verse 8, verse 21, verse 25, and verse 35 uses one phrase, servile work. You shall do no servile work, period. All right? And we need to keep that in focus because the priests did something that Jesus talks about when he says they profane. Mm. Yeah. Now, I need to settle a controversy here. Uh -oh. it's, it's just a controversy in my mind, though. Lord don't Jesus. nobody else know it. They don't know they're about to find yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Matthew says, at this time, Jesus went into the Sabbath, uh, you know. Now, this lesson is in three particular Gospels. It's in Matthew t uh, 12, it's in Mark 3, and Luke 6. Luke is the only one that says that this was the second uh, how did he say? He says it was the second Sabbath after the first. When he puts it that way, it almost appears that this is that whole week where every day was a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So this would be a particular season that he's he's talking about, especially because they're going through the, what we call the cornfield, but it was not corn. It was either wheat or barley. Right. They was going through that particular field at that time, and it could have been the season of the first fruits, sure. which would explain why it was up and in, in, in whatever the case may be, because it was that time. All right. And two, I want to place in here that verse six says that he went into the synagogue. Well, Matthew makes it seem like it's one continuous story, but that was a week later. 
-hmm. or it was the next Sabbath, which could, could be the next day. Mm -hmm. All right. Just keep those things uh, in your mind. So now the disciples, they ate because they was hungry. Now, I personally believe that Jesus went this route on purpose. Yeah, I believe too. I believe he went this route because he knew that the Pharisees was following him. Because if he didn't do this, then we wouldn't know really what this law about this Sabbath was all about. So, and then he knew that his disciples was going to eat off of that. Now, Deuteronomy 23 and 25 says that they have a right to do it. Yeah. So the Pharisees knew that they had a right to go through a field or somebody else's field and get some corn or wheat or barley off of it and eat it. But they could not get it a basket they could not pluck it, you know, they could not do certain things. They could grab it, rub it, and eat the husk or eat it, blow the husk and eat it and continue just to satisfy their need. But they couldn't grab extra. They couldn't put none in the basket. They couldn't bring none home for Junior and the babies in the cup. They couldn't do any of that. They had to eat it there. And that's what I call the laws of generosity. I want to hang there for a minute because we're not generous in this day and time. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, I want to hang there for a minute. Lord just, just, just hang my head there. Hang there. Uh, Bishop Sanders says, "Stick a pen right there." Right there. For some reason, we are greedy, and we don't know how to be. I don't know what's my word. Humane. We say we're sanctified. We speak a tongue that the Spirit gives other folk is what the little kid testified to. But for some reason, we don't know how to come down on a daily basis and be humane. Mm -hmm. You know, you see somebody in need. Help them in their needs. Stop and give them whatever the, the case may be. God instituted these generosity laws, and he told Israel that I'm doing this because you was a stranger, you was a servant and a slave in another man's land, and I was generous to you and pulled you out. And so God says, I want you to be generous to your brother and generous to the strangers, to the fatherless, to the motherless, to the widows, and to the organ players. I'm just saying... <laughs> They, they need love, too. They need love, man. Yeah, plenty of love. Oh, no. Yeah. So, so <laughs> it was legal for them to do that at that time. Now, I want to mention something, too. It's funny. You heard of the Macca Maccabeans? Sure. It is said during the Maccabean season or time, it was about a couple of centuries before the birth of Jesus, it was said that a thousand Jews died. You know why a thousand Jews died? It's because they were attacked on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And because it was the Sabbath, they refused to fight back. Mm -hmm. So over a thousand Jews died that time mm -hmm. because of a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Now, what laws is there that says you cannot defend yourself on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. And that tells you how bad we are because we don't know how to really interpret what God says and what God means. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Ooh, to the wee wee. <laughs> so we, so they were more afraid mm -hmm. of the Sabbath. Of the Sabbath. Than they were defending their lives. Yeah, their lives. Against death. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and impugned, I mean, it, 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 they were doomed. They were doomed. And they died. And they did die. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it, man. I can't tell you how many times the the laws we have established in our Pentecostal churches oh, yeah. is upheld more so. Yes, sir. Than, than the laws of God. Than the laws of God. And the laws of human of 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 of, of human life. Human life. Since then, and and uh -huh. the well being of our even of our, our mothers, the women who have unsaved husbands at home. Mm -hmm. They they grab these women out of their homes, tell them, mm -hmm. uh, look at look at. Um, the apology that came from Benny Hinn. Yes. Who been preaching most of his life about mm -hmm. church first. Mm -hmm. And if a pastor tell you do it, you do this and don't worry about your husband. Right. Okay, that was his stand. Yeah. And he realized he was wrong. Yeah, and he, he publicly said. Now, why did he well, you mean because after his wife left him and came back? Ah, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that was a major issue when his wife walked off and left him. He yes. probably realized something. Then he probably, because see, he got too deep, and I love being here, Me but too. it kind of got too deep into his uh, his work, his, mm -hmm. uh, his calling. And I know that there are a lot of preachers who disagree with me, but I don't care. I've been disagreed with before. It is never God, 
your ministry, and then your family. It is always God, your family, and then your ministry. Right. To prove a point, before there ever was ministry, it was God and family. That's right. Ministry came later. Sure did. And what happens is we get too engulfed in this ministry, and sometimes we forget about God, even in the ministry. Sure do. I've heard many preachers say they walked off and forgot about God yeah. because they were so engulfed in, in the God's ministry, work. in his work, <laughs> in something for God's wife right. or for Jesus' wife. Yeah. So they care more for another man's wife, which mm -hmm. is the church, which right. is the wife of Jesus, bride mm -hmm. of Jesus, than they do their own wife. Mm -hmm. And so that that that's something. And I've seen them where they were more into religion than they was into humane. Yeah. I, so I asked a question on my video. At what point do you make an altar call for the sick? Mm. Do you wait till the end of the service after Rev has preached his message? So this person got to sit there afflicted in pain for the whole entire segment. Mm -hmm. Or do you meet the need the minute you see it there? Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was getting up to minister. And when I got up, the first thing I said was, you know, I like to go into praise with, with, with the saints, praising God. Uh, it's not a formality, but it's a part of my worship. That's what I do. Uh, forget me. Forget if I got time enough to preach. But let's praise God. And so I, right in the midst of it, I hadn't even spoken yet. I said, I made an altar call then. I said, you probably can't wait until the end for an altar call. I made an altar call. If you got a problem, bring it to the altar now. And the people came up and we prayed, whatever the case may be. At the end, one of the sisters came to me and said, before you made that call, I think she mentioned that something drastic was going on with a baby that was in their family. After the prayer, she got the text, the baby's doing fine now. So, I mean, so can you imagine had we waited until the end of the service right before we dismiss? It's not to say that God can't undo some stuff, but why does the person who's in need have to wait until the very end? I can't even hear the message. I'm in too much pain. Well, that's true. Uh, and I think Jesus brought up the tradition of man. Yes. Yep, the tradition yeah. of man, y'all yeah. y'all on it more than you do the truth, than, than the laws of God or, or something like Can that. Can you imagine Paul preaching and that boy falling out the window and to his death? Well, if he was Ken Uncle Nathan, yes. And then him telling him, lead a boy, lead it, I got six more points I need to make. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That means he just started. He just started, he got six more points. <laughs> I literally seen this in Churchill Jones. Yes. While the preachers are preaching, somebody was came up to the altar mm -hmm. for salvation, mm -hmm. and you know what he told them? They got to they got to wait. You got to wait. Yeah. I got five more points to make. Right. And who's to determine when anybody has ever heard the gospel message? Man. I mean, you can't really know Christ without hearing the without Bible. hearing the gospel. But who's to say when that person heard you it? See what I'm saying? Yeah. So no. He might have heard it when it came in. The usher might have gave it to him. Exactly. <laughs> All she said was praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother. Yeah. And he went up there to get saved, but the pastor was up talking. And he couldn't. And he had to wait. Man. To this. And that moment is gone. That moment is gone. Never win that moment ever again. Right, right. It's out of here. It's out of here. Yeah. Gonzola. Gonzola, yeah, that's a, that's a Hispanic dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, there is there is this ritual mm -hmm. and tradition, and I believe jealousy as well, mm -hmm. that that's happening in our churches. Yes. Which is the reason why I got to finish my statement. I yeah. got to finish yeah. my statement, right. okay, before you bring this in. Thank God, I, I thank God for my pastor who is allowing the freedom now of the work to happen in our churches because it's rarely where you, we, in many cases, the preacher can't even get into his sermon because mm -hmm. the people wanting God. Yes. Now, when that happens, when the, when the, when the shift happens like that, uh, you may need to close your book. Yes. We don't, we don't need your, ser your sermon and your, your, and your, your notes. Your yeah, pre-made your sermon. Your pre sermon. We don't need that right now. Right. You know, just, uh, now it's time for you to, because if you, there it is. Because yes. if you're gonna be a, a preacher, mm -hmm. you and then you always rely on your notes. Then I there's think there's a there's an issue there. Yeah. Notes is fine. It is. It's, it's fine. But God is is better. Now you know God. Do you use you. notes out there on that street? 
corner. Well, you don't go on the street corner, so you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Most most pastors don't, or preachers or elders, we don't minister to the common right. person, I call them common. Right. Okay, we just don't. But we we got when we get to church, we got our notes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we have to prepare. <laughs> right. And, and if you go above the Holy Spirit now, now you're showboating because you got to give the people what you studied. Oh, boy. And now the Spirit is gone. I've done that. I've been there, and I admit it. That I should, and then when I did it, I said I should have just stayed where I was yeah, because the spirit is working now. Man, but I didn't stay where I was. And then when the people came down, then I grabbed my grabbed your Bible. Well, uh, and, and it's fine, but Sunday the Lord changed my message because someone, two people I think testified about sicknesses, and the Lord changed my message. And I told the people, y'all continue to talk because God is speaking to me now, and I'm writing the prescription down for you all. And I wrote down the scriptures that was given to me, and I found them, defined them, and then I went forth and told the people, get your pens and paper. I'm going to give you your prescription. Old folks used to call it a prescription. That's something, that's information that God has given to the people for what they need based on their needs, okay. which, is, which is fine to do because now you're really pinpointing and you're hitting home now, and you're giving them something that's really from the Lord that they can use, and when they're successful, God gets the glory yes. because you just told them that the Lord is giving you this information for them. Mm. And and what was his name said? Waffles from heaven. Waffles. Or just an email from God. Yeah. Or something like that at the sacred desk. <laughs> but what, what got me was the the Jews, according to John 7 and 22, they were circumcised their kids on the eighth day. Yeah. But sometime that eighth day after that child was born lands on the Sabbath day. Uh-oh. So what do you do now? Yeah. Do you not... Sac uh, 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 circumcise them because the law said that on the eighth day you must circumcise your son. Mm -hmm. But if the eighth day is that Sabbath day, you still got to circumcise. And that goes to show you sometimes we just ain't really reading scripture and really getting an understanding. We find somebody guilty, but you're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. just in a different category. Uh, 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 Robert. Bobby Whitley says, uh, the altar part of services has diminished as it was in the former days. Is that our Bobby Whitley? Yeah, the altar should be open to, at all times. Yes, sir. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's the drummer? Yeah, Bobby Whitley. That's my brother. Man. Yeah. Ain't but one Robert That's Lewis so Whitley Jr. The, the all time. That's my brother. I really love that brother. But yes, the altar... And like Dad says, the altar is for alterations. Mm -hmm. That altar should never be closed. It should always be open. As a matter of fact, I learned something from Elder Miggins. He says that if you're praying and, you know, like we're opening up service, and someone of the audience come up to the, uh, the altar or wherever, that means that this individual is in trouble. The other saints now need to come up and support them in their need. Mm -hmm. The petitioner, and if it's me, I'm going to come down and begin to pray with this individual. It's all about meeting the needs of the people. It, and we, because of tradition, tradition has messed us up. And we always got, and then we got to tell everybody that the program is subject to change. <laughs> so anyhow, the problem was. That's a Baptist thing. Leave, leave them alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the problem was the disciples did not break a law. Uh, they plucked, and um, Luke says that they rubbed their hands. So right off the bat, you know it's not corn. You don't rub corn. So they, the purpose of them rubbing their hands is so that they can separate the, the wheat from the, shaft. from the shaft, and then they blew it, and they blew the husk off. All right? That's all they did. But now look at, look at something that the Bible says uh, in the first verse. He says, at that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were hungry and began, began to pluck, which means them Pharisees was right up there on them mm -hmm. and caught them as they were beginning to pluck and start telling Jesus. Now, notice they didn't say it according to Matthew. They didn't say that to the disciples. They went directly to Jesus. I believe two reasons they would go to him. Reason number one is because he's the teacher. Mm -hmm. 
So you never, if you're not the master teacher, you don't mess with the student. You go to the teacher who's training them. Right. Let the teacher do it. And then number two is they didn't like Jesus, so they wanted to make an open example and embarrass him before everybody else. Your disciples, is what they said, is doing that which is unlawful. Now, the word unlawful doesn't necessarily mean against the law, but it, it's a lesser offense of a law. Uh, they didn't say they're really breaking the law, but they said it's unlawful. It's not right for them to do but they really couldn't say it's against the law of Moses because then Jesus would have been breaking a law that he himself wrote. He wrote it. Uh, Eric, Eric Jewel Hayes says it has been scientifically established. Mm -hmm. Let me sort of things turned around like that. It, it is scientifically established that on the eighth day of life, the enzymes that promote blood Mm -hmm. Coagulation is at the highest level in the human body that it will ever be in human life. Wow. On the eighth day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God did these things practical wise. Yes. Everything he did, it seemed like it didn't make sense, mm -hmm. but he did it uh, because him being on my science, mm -hmm. right? He, he did things and it didn't really take a miracle right. for him to do a lot of things. Correct. It just took order that mm -hmm. he had already created. Mm -hmm. He already created the order. So he did some things. It seemed like, oh, that was a miracle. No. No. That this, was order. That, that was, was just order. Or it was ordinary for him. <laughs> it is order. Yeah. So the law that was established was for the proper regeneration of maybe your your blood, like what he's saying here, the eighth day. It was the it was the custom or maybe the law, mm -hmm. but it was also done for the betterment of your life. Of your body. And he yeah. set it up that way. Yeah, because even the Levitical laws uh -huh. of not eating the catfish and things like that, mm -hmm. it's and pig and that's not good for you anyway. It's a cleansing of your body. Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. So that so it makes sense, Eric Jewel Hayes. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. The Talmud teaches tradition rather than a word. Yeah, that now and I think the play between the Old Testament and the New Testament that 400 years when God was silent. How do you come up with laws? Mm -hmm. You're a religious community yeah. and your master, which is God, was silent. Yeah. How do you come up with the Talmud? How do you come up with the uh, four, uh, 39 categories of sabbatical laws? How do you come up with the uh, the LXX Bible, uh, uh, the 50 Bible, whatever the thing is called. How do you come up with all of this in a time when God is quiet? Mm, amazing. And and that's when G what who Jesus was going against. Now I want to show you something, and I want to say this: before you find a man guilty, make sure his actions are not justified by the scriptures. Too often we find people guilty, but when you look in scripture, they were in were in their rights to do what they did. And biblically, they were right. You just didn't like it because you probably didn't like them. Ooh so Jesus was right. Jesus was in order. Now, I'll say this also. A good judge, a good judge, I mean, a, a good lawyer always pleads a case before a judge based on another case that has already been tried. Case study. Roe Ro versus Ray, Ray and, and Jones versus Jones, Mason versus Jones, so on and so forth. So Jesus did that same uh, uh, attorney thing. He takes the court system and applies it to these boys and said, have you ever heard of law versus so-and-so? And so and so versus so and so. So he slapped these boys in the face. Then he took them to school. He he presented the the uh, uh, pr uh, the law before them, and he presented the prophets before. Them. Case number one is where he did where David went. Remember David. This is First Samuel, the twenty first chapter. David was fleeing from Saul mm -hmm. before David got to King Achish where he feigned himself like he was crazy, he went to the priest Ahimelech, not Abimelech, but the priest Ahimelech in Gath. And it's funny, that's when he got that sword that he, that he killed uh, Goliath with. Mm -hmm. Goliath's sword was still there. David walks up to the priest and says, hey, I'm hungry, give me five loaves that you got. The priest says to him, I don't have no common food. Food that ordinary people can eat. David says, me and my men are starving and I need your five loaves. Because the showbread was 12 loaves of small bread. 
that will be set out every Sabbath day. And after the Sabbath day, for that seven day period, the priest was to take it and eat it, but replace it. And it's funny how it will sit out for seven days and not be stale. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. That. And still be good for him to eat. Mm -hmm. All right? Because it was God's food. All you got to, all you can do is look at it and say, mm, yeah. one day, yeah, yeah, yeah. two more days, it's going to be five more minutes, it's going to be mine. And this is where I said that there were uh, uh, restrictions. Okay? I remember whatever the word was, qualifications. Qualification number one, Ahimelech says to David, the only way I can let your men eat this is they have not touched women. Mm -hmm. David says, my men ain't touched me women in three days. That's right. And you know for David, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Three minutes is amazing for yes, David. Yes, yeah. So he says, my men have not touched women in three days. That was qualification number one. Qualification number two, David then says, and besides, the bread is common now, which means the seven-day period is up. David came in there at a time when it was time for the priest to remove the showbread and put the fresh bread in, and that bread is now his. She said that. She sure said it. And, and David, he, the man was wise. He knew what time it was. That's why he came. That's why he it pays to be the king. And see, when you know the rules, do you know how to work the rules? Not find a loophole, but work the rules. So when the man gave David and his men the his food, two things took place. It was no longer God's now. It was transferable to the priest. So he gave him his portion. And then number two, David and his men, according to the law, had rested from women at least for three days. Remember when God told Moses to tell them boys, don't even touch your wives. That's right. And on the third day, come to this mountain, whatever the case may be. So that was case number one, and I thought that that was interesting because Jesus said that he was not guilty. Mm. Then what was case number two? Uh, he took them to the law. Uh, I think he said, oh, have you not read in verse five, how that the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple, he used the word profane, profane the Sabbath, and they are blameless. Notice he said blameless. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said they blameless too. Yes. Right. But the word profane means to treat that which is holy as common mm -hmm. because they're not supposed to do no servile work on the Sabbath. Right. That's right. But how them priests, how, how are them lambs and them bulls and them red heifers and them turtle doves? How are they going to be slain or slain or slain? Slain. How are they going to be slain and prepared for, for the sacrifice? True. Somebody got to do it and they couldn't bring it to them dead. Right. The priest had to kill it, mm -hmm. and he had to take that heifer, literally, and bring him up and put him up there, kill him, drain the blood, offer up, so he had to literally work. And that's why Jesus said, the priest profane, profane the Sabbath, which means the priest works. Because remember, the Sabbath, they were not supposed to work. But you, you were... Uh, you were uh, able or allowed to do that which was necessary to be done. And it looks like that's what we do. <laughs> what? We work on Sunday. Yes, sir. Y'all sure do. If you are a deacon, elder, pastor, evangelist, in many cases, we work in, in, in many cases. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and even if we ain't working in church, we say the Sabbath is from the hours of 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> to 1.30. Some of us go go and go to work after that. Some of us got jobs on Saturday. And there are a whole lot of other things dealing with the Sabbath that you, you break because you're not supposed to operate uh, a machine. That's right. We, you, you can't go but so many miles of feet. Can't go so many miles of feet. Okay, so mm -hmm. y'all get in your car. It takes me an hour to get to church. Yes. So I done busted. Oh, you busted. I broke at what? Oh, yeah. About about two miles in, I yeah. busted the lamp, the uh, <laughs> the law right there. You broke right? the fourth, the I'm eighth, the sixth, <laughs> and then you spared. And then, yeah, then, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's a lot of women who go to church on their periods. Uh, you can't say that word. You have to say the custom of women. The custom of women, okay? Yes. And there are, there are married couples who had sex that morning during you Sunday school. You can't say the S word. <laughs> so there was some copulation going. You, you, you can't say the C word. Y'all are so sinning. The FCC and the ICC and the ICU just don't come here today. Uh, L, L, uh, 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 who's this? Hayes. He talked about the LXX. That's a 
Septuagint. The, the Septuagint. That's but that, of course, that's Old Testament Greek. Yes, the Old Testament. But it can, they they created it during the intertestimonial, inter whatever. After period. Malachi. <laughs> right. It was. <laughs> Matthew. Yeah. So they, they came up with the Septuagint. Thank you. That's why I said LXX. I knew somebody was going to come up with it. They came up with the, the Talmud, the Septuagint, and they probably came up with the Sadducees and the Fa Pharisees during that period. Because you didn't hear none of yeah, those none, in the none. Old Testament. Sure didn't. So they created, and men till this day have created tons and tons and tons of laws. Yep. That is not godly, and they make it hard. Pants laws. Women no wearing pants. They got signs on doors of churches that the women cannot come in here. Forget her soul. I, I, you just came, can't come up in here with pants is on. With pantaloons. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we, 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 we messed up. Then, number three. Uh, so that was the second one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the priests, they profane, and so they're, they're guiltless. Uh, then he says... Uh, if you had known this one, verse 7, uh, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. That's Hosea 6. And what he was dealing with is God says, I'm tired of y'all bringing me your sacrifices. But you don't live a holy life. Mm. You don't live a justice life. You don't live a life of people who do who are merciful to other people, but you love to offer me sacrifices. God says, I would rather have your love and I would rather you do mercy for your brethren than to offer up sacrifices unto me. Oh Lord have mercy, man. That's yep, Isaiah chapter one. Go there. He talked about though your sin be as crimson. Crimson. I'll make it white as snow. White as snow. Let's reason together. D. Curtis Randall on the show right now. Bye, Grandmama. I appreciate you. But hey, hey, gotta go. <laughs> D. Curtis, right now. This is the Sir Walter Jones show. What now? He cuts it off so we can oh. finish it. Oh. L, uh, right quick, because I gotta go to a choir rehearsal. Oh, uh, 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 L. Jones. Yes, sir. Uh, the disciples were were Jews. Yes, sir. Should not they have known not to do that on the Sabbath? They, they oh, already knew. Uh huh. So, do you think there was something there that was established with Jesus? So they just did it free will because they knew who the Sabbath maker was. Believe mm. that the Jews, because these are the non Pharisees. Mm -hmm. I believe these Jew boys knew the truth from the man-made laws yeah. because they had the truth with them. Yeah. They was walking with the truth. And who's to say they probably asked him, Lord, can we get some corn? Can we, can we eat? We don't know if there was a conversation prior to this. Right. But I believe, it is my belief, I believe that they knew that they were right and free to do it because they knew the law, which is Deuteronomy 23 and 25, that says that they have a right to glean uh, as long as they, they could not take a tool or an instrument to cut a sickle or nothing like that. But they can pull it off, the heads of it, and rub it, blow it, and eat it. And just enough to get full and continue on. The law of God provided that. It was these other 39 laws that was instituted that said that they couldn't even do that. They can't. Uh, I mean, you would be surprised the little small, minute detail of the laws that they said. If you were sick, you had to be like an emergency sick for you to be healed. So this man that had the withered hand, Luke says it was his right hand. And Luke says that and, and, and Matthew says that the Pharisees knew. And this is why it's good for people to know you. They knew Jesus was going to heal them. And so they stood there and they watched him to see if he was going to do it, knowing he was going to do it so that they might accuse him of breaking the Sabbath law. And this whole thing is to let us know that there is no law that's above the needs of, human, of, of humans. There's none. And we break, I think we're Pharisees on Sundays. Yeah, I believe so too. Because there are many people who are hungry, who are starving, who are hurting, whatever. You got company that comes over your house you ain't seen in 25,000 years, but you got to lock the door because you got to go worship. Is that something? Like you ain't going to be back there tomorrow. Mm. I don't mean at home. I mean right. <laughs> for choir rehearsal. Right. <laughs> and you ain't going to be back there in seven more days. Right. It's something about we have made church a chore and we made church a law when it should be the house of worship, a place where we go to celebrate God, to learn of him, and to put it into practice throughout the rest of the week.
and not segregate ourselves from the world. Jesus never segregated himself from the world. He was in the, uh, eating with the sinners and the Pharisees are saying, well, look at this man. He's eating with sinners. And he says, see, sinners have souls. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> I think that the Jim Crow laws were made uh, not to protect the black man. <laughs> 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 okay Jim Crow laws were made because they hated black people yeah yeah and they wanted to keep them at bay yeah they wanted to keep a pure race of whites so that's why they made that law uh so these laws I love the way you said uh because the laws are made and then they are upheld because because they hated Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they brought up the law to trick him, to mm -hmm. trap him, because they hate him. Mm -hmm. I looked at this thing with the Roseanne Barr ape monkey trial, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey trial. Okay. Last night, Samantha B. She's a comedian. Mm -hmm. She's on TBS station. She said something derogatory towards Ivanka Trump. Mm -hmm. On her show, she calls her a, a C word for women. That's, that's C U N T, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing you can call a woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, when Roseanne Barr said what she said, the left um, and ABC fired her. Mm -hmm. um, the, the left liberal audience went wild because she said what she said against Valerie Jarrett. Mm -hmm. How dare you? But the right, the Republicans said, yeah, she said what she said and she shouldn't have said that. But they should not have canceled the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should use this as a the learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Donald Trump made a statement that says, yeah, but what, hey, what about me? ABC sh should have fired all these other people who talked about me and me and me and me. All right? That was yesterday all day long. Mm -hmm. Today, after Samantha B said what she said last night against Ivanka, then the right says, how dare she? Mm -hmm. And they said, cancel her show. After they just got to saying, don't cancel Roseanne Barr's show. Right. Use it mm -hmm. as a lesson. Yeah. Cancel her show. She needs to be put up on charges, she needed to be slung up and crucified. <laughs> oh, man, the White House went, went bunkers over it. And I says, now you see what's happening here? Yeah. So it's just, the, it's the same about the law. Mm -hmm. the, the, the right was going so upset, ups, ups, was up so upset about Samantha B because they hate mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. and what she stand for with those that are on the left. Mm -hmm. The same with uh, Roseanne Barr, the ones on the left hate her mm -hmm. and what she stands for. You know, those mm -hmm. those people who are conservatives. Mm -hmm. And that is the that is the great divide in America. Yeah. And that is the great divide in our, our churches. Yes it is. I see because Pentecostals fight Catholic or, or uh, we all fight each other. And within the Pentecostal there's a civil war yeah. because if you are apostolic Mm -hmm. Assemblies of God, mm -hmm. you, you're fighting, you're full gospel, you're mm -hmm. fighting, if you're Baptist, you're fighting, okay? And smoking, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> and cussing, and <laughs> he listed this, <laughs> okay? All this stuff, so it, it is a it is a great divide. Mm -hmm. Brother says, point on the speaker. <laughs> point on the speaker. <laughs> What's that point? Uh, my lesson says justice and Sabbath laws. Yeah, that's what it is. I think the author was trying to convey that justice for healing trumps Sabbath laws. Justice for healing. Yeah, justice. Yeah, the, the whole quarter. Did you say Trump? <laughs> right. The whole dealing with justice. The whole quarter is okay. The whole quarter is dealing with justice. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, next week we're going to be in Matthew 13, I think it is. So this this whole thing. But the key thing is is Jesus is saying that justice always trumps anything else. Yes. Doing right. So at the end of this conclusion, he says. To do good on the Sabbath is always in order. Mm -hmm. To do well or to do good. Because one of another reasons why he healed this man is because they were looking at him and Luke or, Matt or Mark says that Jesus looked around at them and Jesus was angry. You know what he did with the man? Mm -hmm. He told the man to stand forth. 
That means I want them to see with their own eyes what I'm getting ready to do with you. Yeah. Told them to stand up. Let this whole synagogue mm -hmm. see you. Mm -hmm. And then he told him, stretch forth your hand, and his hand was whole. You would think the Pharisees would rejoice. Man, you finally healed. Now you can write us this letter you've been trying to write us. You can go support your family now. We don't have to take care of you. Something. But no, not even rejoice with them that do rejoice. The only thing that the Pharisees got out of this fact was Jesus did it on the Sabbath day. And we are guilty of those laws. Donald Trump is getting ready to pardon Rod Blagojevich. Is he? Yes. He got to because he isn't so much mess. Okay. Donald Trump is not going to be celebrated for that act mm -hmm. by the left. Right. Why? Because Donald Trump is doing it. Mm -hmm. Even though I right. believe it's a good work. Right. And so it goes by what you just said. Mm-hmm. It depending on who's doing the good work. Who's doing the good work. So they should have celebrated Jesus, but because they hate him, no matter what he do good. They're going to always hate him. So Donald Trump will, I, I, um, I think 85% of Illinoisans say, get that man out of jail. Yeah. He was wrong what he did, but giving him 14 years, please, you need to put some of these other people away for what you did for this guy. All right. right? We impeached him. Good. But you're taking this man away from his family all those years for what he did. There are people who did worse, and you just slapped them on it. All right. So Donald mm -hmm. Trump's gonna gonna. He may not give him a full pardon. He may give him a, a commuted sentence. Mm -hmm. All right. Nevertheless, he'll be out of jail. Mm -hmm. That's a good work. Now I will applaud Trump for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to applaud him for that. But uh, that's where it will stop. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna give him his two claps? Yeah. Give him, okay. Because I, I applaud him for doing something right. Um, uh, Eric Jewel Hayes says the disciples were not breaking the law, they were right. breaking tradition. tradition. That's good. Christ was showing the religious rulers that they are they had raised tradition to the level of scripture and it was uh, handcuffing mm -hmm. the people spiritually. That's and that's our whole point, Eric Hayes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good stuff. That's Eric Jewel Hayes. Yeah, Jewel Hayes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a respect on that. That's it. Uh, Joseph Phillips, that's Joseph Daniels Phillips. Joseph, Joseph Daniels Phillips. Uh, says, Phillips. Now you can write the letter. <laughs> <laughs> You talk about what you said. What, what I yeah. said. <laughs> Writing a, you said oh, something. yeah, now you can write. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I mean, the man been wanted probably. Probably. <laughs> right. He's probably right hand and he was forced to be able to use his letter. <laughs> <laughs> write the letter, Doc. Write, write the, the letter. letter now. Come on, Doc. <laughs> All yeah. right. All right. So, that, so that's good. So they hated Jesus. So he did a good thing by healing this man. But he was the wrong guy to do He's it. The wrong guy doing it on the wrong day. And sometimes I watch Fox News, and some some of the things they say is right about the black struggle. But because of it, it comes because from them. it's coming from them, right? They are not the right representation. Because, because I believe because if Donald Trump releases Blagojevich, uh -huh. it would be not. It would be a hidden agenda. It would be to get points to him. Wait, well, everything Donald Trump does gives points to him. Exactly. Everything, even if it's But when it includes. gives points to him, it mm -hmm. takes stuff away from his idiocracy. Yeah, it does. And it's all the stuff that yeah, he's doing. It does do that. Yeah, and yes. the presidents are good for doing stuff like that. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah Bill Clinton did it in his second administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kept going. Yeah, exactly. yeah, so you, you, everything that's done, even in the church, is done politically. Oh, yeah, yes. Done that's, politically. Just the spotlight off of sure. me. Put it on somebody else. Yes. But see, see what I've done? See what I did. Right. Absolutely. Look at the man. Who was that? Uh, the, the king? Who was that? Uh, the emperor? Who killed James? Uh, Herod. And, and, and it pleased the people it pleased the, the, yeah, to Herod, do that. King Herod. So he put the other brother in jail. Put Peter up in there. Because then I'm going to do the put same the thing. Put the wrong one in jail. Put the wrong one in there. I'm going to preach on that. Man, I just you did. put the wrong one in jail. You put jail. the wrong one in jail. Ooh, Lord have mercy. angel came and got him yeah, up. Say, hey, hey, boy. Wake up. <laughs> Get up. Rise, Peter. You already oh, slayed an eight, but... <laughs> Joseph, I'm preaching that one before you do. Yes, sir. You, the wrong, you locked up the wrong man. you locked person. up the wrong man. Yeah. But I think this lesson, mm -hmm. instead of just looking at it as a Sunday school lesson, these lessons have been very powerful. Yes. I think instead of just looking at it as a Sunday school lesson, I think we need to realize that there is a message in here. Yeah, it is. That the church needs to return back to humane. Yeah. Back to being humans. Humanitarian Back to works. Humanity, the works of humanity. Yeah. 
I think that's what we need to return back to. Because back in our day, the preacher or the pastor of the church was known in the community. You was. He walked the community. He was the leader of the community. I don't mean just getting in politics, right. but I mean I don't mean running for an office and then soon the governor pays you. You keep your mouth shut. Right. I don't mean stuff. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't mean stuff like that. I mean he was godly feared, and the, the police and everybody knew that this was Reverend so and so, and the community looked up to him and spoke to him because he was a man of. Uh, what's my word again? Integrity, I don't know. Uh, integrity a humanitarian, yeah. and stuff. We don't we don't even hear a whole lot of humanitarian awards, no, because it's always every man for himself. And then the prejudice moment is when we all become Pharisees. That's on Sundays. We don't see nothing but our local church. That's true. Not man. the church, not the body of Christ, but our. You know, when I used to drive the van for Soul Savers, you know, one of the things I used to love to see. Greater Holy Temple, Gospel Temple, so and so, all these other church vans. Right. We would drive past and blow the horn each other and keep on. That was a joy. That was another world because we're picking up the people of God and bringing them into the house of God so they can worship and we can worship the mm -hmm. Lord together. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that we need to do as a human being. That's done outside. That's the done outside. Of and that is what we lost. Yes. If we ever, well, we had it at one time because the black church especially was the backbone, yes, the was. pillar of the community. And that's what bred, gave breath to the civil rights movement. Because mm -hmm. whenever they met, they always met in the church. That's it. That's it. They always met in the church. And it was the strength. Uh, and <clears throat> the government even pulled on the church. Uh, whenever you, if, they, if somebody was released from prison, the, the judge was, would turn him over to the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, when somebody needed home, housing, and food, yes, or whatever, sir. the public aid system was the church. Yes, sir. And that's the way it was. It's not like that anymore. No. Every man the for church himself. Is on the church is on public aid itself, <laughs> trying to pay that mortgage. All right, y'all, hit the share button. Thank you. This is a part two. Part one got cut off, sorry, but it's still up there on the wall as a setup. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Eric Jewel Hayes, thank you for that good nuggets. We needed it. All right. Hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the bell. Bing. Subscribe. And uh, we'll talk again. Maurice Geek Gregory said he's going to preach that, man. Which one? Uh, the one about, um, uh, the one he said, don't don't steal that. You're going to preach it? Yeah, you locked up the wrong man. You locked up the wrong man. Yeah, so when I hear it on Facebook Live tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow morning. we know that Maurice Gregory was a thief. Right. I won't get my rights to that. A word. spiritual thief. <laughs> All right. Blessings to you. Zolly Webb, my dear brother. Pastor Zolly Webb. You can't preach that either. Yeah. Like yeah. Zolly Webb, leave that alone. It has been reported to me that you're going to try to steal that too. <laughs> Come on in. The water's fine. All right, y'all. See you next time. So what the drone show.